Anyway. Um, just to continue warming myself up there. Yeah, I try not to. I try not to spoil things. Um, I'm gonna play a bit of the first episode. I'm, st I'm still going back occasionally to my... <laughs> yes, I'm going to do that. That may not be tonight. This will be the third or fourth time I've actually sat down and tried to do it. And it's not worked out so far. Alright, check out this jump. I may have played this level way too many times. I really like the visual of these presents. Pumpkins were cute. There's a reason I'm jumping here, and that reason is the fruit. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of confuse the um, theme of a level, doesn't it? Out of sixteen done. Yeah, with this run, ideally, I would restart the whole game if I get hit once. The whole run. Hey, I'm just doing it with episode 1 and only in normal difficulty. There's... There is a guy who did all three episodes, he might actually have done the fourth one by now as well, um, in hard mode the same way. I think that's all of them. <laughs> no, it is not. Um, the key has decided to place itself at a new place today. Why it's done that. 
It could be because I'm I'm playing at a different resolution. You'll also notice that it's not going green at the edges when I get all the gems. All the crystals. Which I think is just something funny because I switch between... Um, for streaming purposes, I switch to a slightly different resolution. And I don't always play in full screen mode either. So there's a few little very weird, very hard to describe graphical glitches. Like you'll see, there's there's no green. I have all the, all the crystals. Okay. I did sort of a practice run of this run uh, this morning in lieu of actually streaming. Um. About halfway, and then I made one really stupid mistake and kind of got sick of it. I did enough to know that in this little red bit here, there are no extra crystals. Ah! I couldn't fire at it because I'd already fired at the bouncy thing. And yeah, I had planned to stream this morning, so about... You know, 10 hours ago or so. Um, but I realised chatting to Primoz in Twit on um, Discord that I'd been using the wrong thing to get the time for the Netherlands to figure out what time it would be for you guys. Because if you Google, time in Netherlands, it gives you the right time. It gives you the... Yeah. If you just type in time in NL, it gives you Newfoundland. And I mean, I have to kind of think there must be some sort of regional thing. Like, you must make some decision to say, okay, NL, he must mean Newfoundland in Canada and not the Netherlands. Which is fine. I'm just really curious about how they made that decision for an Australian. Yeah, I guess. Um, I literally just googled time in NL. I mean, maybe it might actually not be that obvious. You, you do get the other ones, okay. Because I was thinking maybe it doesn't realize, oh, he's typing the, that's the country code for the domain. Maybe it doesn't know that he wants... Yeah. But maybe it does. You're right, it must be language. Yeah, it's pretty easy to work out, but like... Um... Here in Southern-ish Australia... We're actually on Daylight Savings Time, or we have Daylight Savings, so our, our time actually changes... Um... By about an hour every six months or so. And I can never remember which way it is. And estimating it off my own bat, trying to think, oh, is it an hour four? Is it an hour back? How does it work? It's really funny because um, there are some other live streamers that I watch, um, like the the Linus Tech Tips WAN show, for example. Um, 
they're affected by the, by daylight savings, and it's actually really funny because there's like a a two or three week period uh, twice every year where the time that they have booked to start streaming changes first by one hour, then by another hour. So it goes from being sort of Saturday 10 a.m. my time to 11 and then midday. Which is annoying, because it used to be like, oh, you know, they'd start at, you know, 12 o'clock, which means I'd, I'd get time to do a whole bunch of things on a Saturday morning and actually run around, you know, do a bit of shopping, get some good lunch. Nailed it. And then over the course of a month or so, it goes back two hours and starts at 10 a.m. instead. And it, it changes my Saturday. It's annoying. Now, something kind of interesting here. The shot from this turret is not stopped by the stop sign. It used to stop. In the original game, the stop sign would stop a laser turret. Yeah, here's something funny though. Um, I would imagine in your country, everyone is on the same on the same time zone, right? That's not the case in Australia because it's only sort of the southern, the more southern states that actually do daylight savings. So, for example, um, if you work with someone in Brisbane, they don't. They don't do daylight savings. They just don't need to because they're closer to the equator. Why would they do what? Live in Brisbane? No idea. This doesn't affect um, Queensland as much. Because uh, the amount of sun that they get during the day isn't that variable. Um, like where I am, it can be... I don't think I'm as far south as you are north. I don't think. Um, so it doesn't affect us quite as much, but it's still... Still a bit. What's really fun though is because Australia is so large, um, even across the country, even just you know on any particular day, uh, time zones are a bit funny. Because on the on the east, sort of we're um, we're plus ten or eleven, and then in South Australia, which is sort of in the middle of the country. They are about half an hour behind us. Did I get the other crystals yesterday? So we'd be at like 10, Adelaide would be at like 10.30. So you think, oh, you know, Western Australia, maybe they'll be sort of in the same... same sort of ballpark. Um, but no, Perth is actually two or three hours behind us despite being sort of the same distance-ish from Adelaide as we are. And so Adelaide's an example of a half-hour time zone. Uh, what's really crazy is that Australia has some quarter-hour ones. There's, I forget which island it is, but there's an island um, south of Australia that is... No, it's not an island, it's... I think it's a little town on the border of Western Australia and South Australia, on the coast where their time zone is 15 minutes out from Adelaide. And it's only used in that tiny, tiny area. Yep. Yeah. 
I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like, Australia is a massive country. Like, our landmass is comparable to that of the United States. With about a tenth of the population. Oh, what a nice jump. Yeah, that key is not in the right place. I mean, it's not an easy problem to solve. Um, in my job, I work a bit with... How could I explain this in a non unanonymizing uh, way? Uh, basically, I work with a lot of data based on maps. And I discovered the other week that. As an example, so GPS coordinates are kind of a global thing. Um, but it is far from the only or even the most sensible. These bats are trolling me. Uh, so, GPS coordinates are based on a certain datum that basically puts. Uh, it's basically figured out from one particular location in the US, which is basically the offices of the people who came up with this system. And then coordinates are based around that. And they would have used a particular datum, which is basically, you know, the shape of the Earth. Yeah. So there's that datum, which is American. I think the Russian system, which is equivalent to GPS technology speaking, technology wise, would have its own different datum. So coordinates in that system are different. Um, and then to compound that, obviously maps have been around for much, much longer than GPSs have. So a lot of countries, come on birds, this is, yeah, I'm coming back to that. <laughs> it's like every, every, most countries have their own little system. Yeah. Like, that'll use a different datum. That'll use one based somewhere in Europe. I have never seen this before. I can't jump up there. There we go. So, I'm in Australia, and I, in, in my job I work with a fair amount of mostly Australian data. But it's data that's collected using GPS, so it uses the American system. Um, but anything historical, like rec records from um, government agencies, for example, if they're sort of older than sort of 80s, 90s, they use the Australian system. Which is, again, it's expressed in coordinates the same way where am I even going? So yeah, our system actually has to be able to convert from the Australian system to the regular GPS. Now, another particularly terrifying part of the system is, you know, okay, You've got um, a certain set of, I don't even know what the plural or datum would be, datums. Uh, you have a certain set of datums, they're all expressed in a certain way, but you can convert from one to the other.
Oh, I'm not saying data. Um, D A T U M, M for Mary. Right. Well, that's confusing. Uh, but where I was going with this story was that... In addition to... Is it? Okay. Alright, fine. <laughs> okay. Um, the problem is, though... Okay, he's done his turn. The problem is, just converting coordinates from one system to another, that works. But then you also have to consider continental drift. So, the Australian system, uh, the most commonly used version, is, I think it was based in 1994. And there was a previous version, I think, made in 84. And they're about to release a new one for 2020. And they have to do this because every now and then the continents move. And it's not just a simple, okay, Australia's moving. How much does it affect them? Well, when they. Uh, to convert between the Australian systems that were made in 84 and 94, there's about 180 meters of difference. Um, from 94 to 2020, it's actually a bit smaller, it's only about 7 meters. The bigger movement in the, between the two older systems, I think, is it's due to some other stuff. I don't, don't really understand it. Uh, but yeah, Australia, as an example, is not only moving north, and I think a little bit east, by about... Uh, Gosh, don't quote me on this, but it's a few centimeters a year sort of thing. It's not a huge amount. But it's, it's also rotating slightly clockwise. And I don't think there's a system in the world that can actually correct for such strange changes. Oh yeah, time zones. Yeah. Or just a result of humans trying to apply a very rigid digital understanding to a very, very analog system. This is going to be good. Is that because if you do the same operation several times you'll get different results? Because that seems counterintuitive.
Yep, I do so far. Let's see if I can jump and grab a freaking gear. Nice. That saves a bit of time and he's a little bit safer than doing it on the way down. Because if you do it on the way down and miss one, you have to go back to the, you know, wait for an entire other platform cycle. Which in this level in particular is quite painful. I think I know what you're getting at. It might not be the very strict definition of analog and digital, but I think I do know what you mean. It still really bothers me that this danger sign, which is the first one that you see in the entire game, doesn't fall. That really bugs me for some reason. Like, it's teaching people, oh, it's a danger site. Oh, okay, I guess this is the first one that people see, but it doesn't fall either. Oh, the other thing that really bugs me, for some reason, is the firing range for this thing, uh, for the turrets has changed, it's become shorter. Like, it should be shooting at me here. Anyway. Have I, have I left myself enough time? Oh. Yeah, the eye monsters, they shoot a lot less. I mean, they're not complaining, it makes them easier to deal with. Just a ten tiles, that's what you know. Yeah, I'm going to be playing this very conservatively. I very deliberately didn't rush to get the platform. Like, this is going about as well as this attempt has ever gone. As what I'm attempting has ever gone, rather. Yeah. 
that's 11 done. This old chestnut. It's a good little community, isn't it? Okay, if I make a mistake anywhere tonight, it's probably going to be this level. do at this point, do I? Uh, I'm gonna come back to the one. Because I don't feel particularly brave just at this moment in time. Gosh, my heart's even counting a little bit. <laughs> Those little electric blue guys... ...gave me nightmares as a kid. But it's whether I will or not. Definitely getting that door open. Now... I do have to get past these guys. Let's just take it nice and slow. That's four shots out. Right. Grenades, or like the um, the blue bouncy bombs in Jazz Jackrabbit. Those would be nice to have right about now. I still haven't played Biomenus. Yeah, and that's kind of why I'm less keen to try it. <laughs> Congratulations, you made a funny. You do that. <laughs> uh, I think I just ignore that guy. Or maybe I don't. Alright, watch me do glorious battle with this thing. Really? He wants to fight at me again. Well, that's an extra 5,000 points. Sixteen 
15 shots. Yeah, sounds about right. Slow, platform, all the way back. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race. Now, when does this guy turn around? There he is. That was a little slow because I took a little bit of extra time. That was nearly... Okay, that's the first major mistake I've made so far. And it was falling off, I think. I didn't think I'd make that jump. The carelessness has started, unfortunately. We have three levels to go. And I've started getting careless. Super carefully. So this is the level I accidentally speed ran. While actually while practicing for this um perfect one, I got the Steam achievement for speedrunning because I finished this one in under a minute. Okay, two left. Oh no, and it's this one. This level. Of the guy in the top right. Hey, Aquatics. I'm doing a perfect health run of episode one. Watch me blow it in a moment. The second last level that I have to finish. Okay. 
I'm not sure why that never occurred to me. Gosh, I can't remember. Um... Maybe. Okay, good. Maybe he has changed it then. Because I definitely just managed to shoot him. And I spent ages doing like, oh, could I... You know, do I time my jump for when he's at the left end or the right end or... A certain place up or down. Um, but yeah, you can actually jumping from that height. You can actually, if you if you fire at sort of the very top few pixels of your jump, you can actually shoot something there. Uh, either way, that's done now. All right, one level to go. This is it. I'm going to play this one super carefully, super boringly. And then probably still screw it up with some hilarious, stupid mistake. You know, I have all the ammo in the world. I'm just gonna shoot and kill these things. Including this guy. Because I don't like the thought of falling back down here and landing on that. is actually pounding. This is dumb. Um, I want to go that way. No, actually, he's a bit too close to the edge. I don't want to kill him accidentally and make him block the bit that I have to jump down in a moment. <laughs> this is the most ridiculously cautiously I've ever played this level. But, 3, 2, 1. That's it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do that. That is a perfect health run. Episode 1, normal difficulty. 
And now the fruit. We'll see. We'll see if I screw this up. I have a system now. And away we go. No idea if the platforms are in the right place. But the method that I have to doing this, I don't think it matters. I think I have enough time no matter what. Like, we're now going to have to wait for this guy. And hopefully we- yes! That was quick fast. That's it, we've got it. Simple as that. That's it! Five seconds left on the clock and I did it. If this platform... If I hadn't been able to slip past this platform, I wouldn't have gotten that. Because it was in exactly the wrong place. You've done it? Okay. Where's my score? Yeah, I think there's more display bugs there. Um, I'm also running... The monitor that I'm playing this on, I'm also running in a non widescreen aspect ratio, it's different to how I think the game is expecting it to be. Uh, just because that makes things with OBS slightly easier, it makes a bunch of things easier for me. Long story short. Okay, 